Hello, I'm Annette Young and welcome to the 51 Percenter show about women reshaping our world. Coming up, gender and the coronavirus. Is it the case that more men than women are dying in this global epidemic? We'll be talking to Professor Sabra Klein, a specialist on gender differences in infectious diseases at the John Hopkins University. Also, anger in South Africa over revelations that hospitals sterilised a group of pregnant HIV positive women without their consent. And as an increasing number of women enter business schools here in France, how professors are now offering courses on dealing with sexism in the workplace. But first to our top story, had the word coronavirus is striking fear in many people across the globe. Now declared to be a pandemic by the World Health Organization, tens of thousands of cases are being reported in numerous countries, with nations implementing ever stricter controls on movement and social distancing. This is scientists' attempt to establish the nature of this virus and what makes which people more vulnerable. But one interesting element that's emerged from early data is the fact that more men than women are dying in this epidemic. Joining me now from Washington DC is Professor Sabra Klein, who's a specialist on gender differences in infectious diseases at the John Hopkins University School of Public Health. Uh, Professor Klein, thank you for your time. We are clearly in uncharted territory with this virus, but early data coming out of uh, China is suggesting that men are more likely to die than women. Is this actually the case? Well, thank you, and thank you for raising um, awareness to this issue. Yes, this is the case. And you correctly identified that it is that the severity of this novel coronavirus and mortality from this novel coronavirus appears at these early stages, again, based on data coming out of Wuhan, China, that it is males that are significantly more likely to die. And one important clarification is that it is older men. Men 75 years and older are where we are seeing the largest difference between men and women. The mortality rates among men is twice as high as it is in older aged women. Why is this happening? At the moment, as the pandemic uh, continues to unfold, we do not completely know why, but there are speculations or what we would term hypotheses. One hypothesis is that underlying illnesses, um, what we often refer to as comorbidities, illnesses that increase risk for more severe outcomes, can in some cases be more prevalent in older men than women pulmonary disease, cardiovascular disease, would be two examples. Another hypothesis is that behaviors or lifestyle choices that are associated with greater risk of more severe outcome. There has been a lot of discussion both in the media and in the scientific literature about the role that smoking may play. Men are significantly more likely to report smoking in China than are women. The numbers are staggering. Over 90 percent of smokers are presumably men in China. Um, I would, however, like to caution our analysis of the role that smoking may play in these gender-associated differences during this novel coronavirus uh, pandemic, in part because in China it is not socially acceptable or, if you will, considered feminine for women to smoke. And so the third hypothesis, so in addition to other illnesses, lifestyle choices, um, is our biology. There can be biological differences in the immune systems between men and women, and which impacts our ability to fight an infection. And there are going to be data, again, coming out of China, suggesting that our blood chemistry and immune cell counts do, in fact, differ between men and women and may, in fact, be contributing to some of the differences that we're observing in the severity of disease. Professor Klein, does that mean that men are immunologically weaker than women? Yes. Generally speaking, women mount greater immune responses 
to uh, a variety of viruses as well as other infectious agents than do men. Are you disappointed, Professor Klein, that that hasn't really been taken into account so far? So I have mixed feelings. I am disappointed that many of the public health entities around the world and our public health officials are not speaking out that being male is in fact a risk factor for more severe outcome, and in particular being an older male, because I do think there is public health messaging that could occur in that context. So for example, if more men, if more older aged men knew this, or their spouses knew this, it may mean that they would be more vigilant in um, taking advantage of health care. So in particular, in many countries, including um, developed countries, both in Europe as well as in North America, we find that men are significantly less likely to seek out health care than our women. This would be an example of a time where we want to mitigate that. We want men seeking out health care at the first signs or symptoms that are consistent with this novel coronavirus infection. Professor. And with regards to practicing hygiene, would it be right to assume that women tend to be more responsible than their male peers and ensuring not only themselves but people around them and then their households are doing all the right things with washing hands and cleaning surfaces and so on? Such a fantastic question, and the simple answer is yes. There are data to support your statement. Women are significantly more likely to wash their hands, and when washing their hands, are significantly more likely to use soap. They are significantly more likely to encourage those around them to um, engage in proper hygiene to prevent spread of infectious diseases. So this is also a public health message uh, that, that men need to improve these behaviors to avoid infection, knowing that, in fact, they may suffer a more severe outcome. Professor Klein, we're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for having me. Moving on, and there's been an outcry in South Africa over revelations that hospitals had sterilised a group of pregnant HIV-positive women without their consent. This according to an investigation by the government's Commission for Gender Equality. The investigation prompted by a 2015 complaint which documented 48 cases where women were allegedly either forced to or coerced into agreeing to the procedure while giving birth. Nicholas Chemin has more. Many South Africans were shocked when a recent report said dozens of women were sterilised without their consent. Doctors removed their uterus without them knowing. Most of the documented 48 cases concerned black women who were HIV positive. Bonga Kilin Sibi is not HIV positive, but she was one of the victims. She was trying to have a second child when her doctor told her she didn't have a uterus. She went back to the hospital where she gave birth a few years ago. They simply told her they removed her uterus after the child was born, but didn't say why. Unfortunately, I can't just sit back and, um, and be okay with the fact that I don't have a uterus. I don't even know why I don't have a uterus, you know. If maybe there was, there was a, a valid um, explanation, maybe I could find closure and, you know, accept. But it's so difficult to find closure when I don't even know why I don't have a uterus. The Commission for Gender Equality carried out the investigation. The procedures were conducted in dozens of hospitals on women who gave birth via caesarean section between 2002 and 2015. There was no reason for these women who were living with HIV, for these women who were found to be having TB, and for these women who chose to have seven babies to actually be operated on in that manner. The South African government said it would meet the victims of coerced sterilization. Activists say it must, above all, swiftly investigate all the medical professionals involved in the scandal. And finally, as more and more women enter business schools here in France, professors are having to rethink how to teach students about sexism in the workplace. Our colleagues at France Deux report on how Paris business schools are now offering classes on gender equality. In this business school, it's not only marketing or finance on the timetable. All first-year students have to attend this class too. She manages like a guy. What that means is that you have a managing style that's out of step with what we expect from you as a woman. 
three hours of teaching these future managers about gender stereotypes, which contribute to gender inequality both at work and in society as a whole. Adverts also feed into these stereotypes. I love action. I chose a job with work on the grounds. I'm a postman. What do you think that will say for women? Recruitment adverts for the postal service are different for women and men. When it's a woman, what about her? She likes to feel useful, she wants a job that's meaningful, she's a postwoman. It's not just teachers who are trying to raise awareness. The university's feminist society organises workshops to teach students how to negotiate a salary. In general, women negotiate lower for their first salary, their first contract. This consultant helps female students to prepare for job interviews. At the age of 20, it's not easy to make demands. We're all in the process of looking for internships. To have the courage to say no and to stand up for yourself, it's tricky. When we're there, we just need to start off by asking for more than we would normally, and then we go on from there and see what happens. Student members of the Feminist Society are determined to make sure things change. For the Society's president, accepting a lower salary than a male counterpart is out of the question. If women decide to stop putting themselves down, to stop underestimating themselves, at some point employers will say, what? They won't do that anymore? What do we do? Well, we hire them. It's up to us as women to say, if you don't want to give me the same salary as Tom, Dick or Harry, well then, sir, I'll take my skills and I'll go. Hire Tom in that case. In France, most business schools have put in place measures to improve equality between men and women. And that's it for now. You can also connect with us via our Facebook page, that of course being France24.51%, or do send us a tweet at underscore 51%. So until our next show, bye for now.